All right, kids. So today we're going to be breaking down a short line. Um, I kind of did this backwards. I filmed the bone in one beforehand. So this is later in the afternoon. Um, now I'm going to be doing a boneless breakdown of a short loin as well as the flap and everything that goes along with that. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, today I'm using six inch Vitronox, six inch geyser, uh, probably about a 10 inch breaker and obviously steel and hook. Um, so what we're going to do first, we'll pop off this ox tail as well. Get that out of the way with this. We're just going to go right through that joint comes off real quick. All right. So first thing you're going to take off this little extra flap just because it's easier to deal with it hanging um, than it is when it's on the table. All right, so first we're gonna pop this flap off. Um, so this includes the flat meat, which you get your steak tips out of, and the flank as well. So first we're gonna take this big old chunk of fat off and try not to cut the tri-tip. And then we're going to come up here. If you look, here's your H bone. So this is the pelvis. You're going to come up right to the point where this flap connects and just start working it down. <clears throat> like I've explained a ton of times and to like every cut of meat you see me do, there is a membrane that connects um, all of these cuts to another. And if you take your time and you start learning, all the muscle groups, all of this comes apart very, very easy. All right, so you also don't want to dig in too far because your tenderloin is right here. So what I like to do is have it spun around like this. You're going to see, I'll spin it so you can kind of see it. This is the end of your tenderloin down here. So when you cut in, you want to cut right below where that bone sits. The rest of the pelvis comes down and you're going to cut in. You're going to get to a point where the red stops. There's going to be a small fat section, which is the separation between the flap and the, and the strip. And you're going to cut right down and open that up for you. All right. So now, but that's open, you're going to come on this other side and just take your knife, slice at a time. Again, not cutting into the tenderloin. That's your money maker right there. And just work it all the way down. You're going to pop all the suet off as well. And it's going to bring it all the way down. And what you're going to be left with is this bone that stays on when you're breaking off, um, whether you're doing quarters where you're breaking off the rib um, and the whole four quarter from the animal, or you do like I do and break the chuck and shoulder off and then break the rib off separately. You leave one rib here and just slice that right open. All right, so now you're left with the short line. I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to the Victory Knox Flex Steel because this is where it gets a little more interesting. So, and I mentioned this a little bit in the deer processing video that's going to be coming up before this. Most people do not pull out 
all of the tenderloin. The tenderloin actually starts up here, up by the sirloin. Most people just pull it out, if it's a deer, pull it out here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, right where this H bone is, put our knife in and open it up and go down either side. Using your meat hook, there's a section here. You see there's that meat, then it's fatty. And curl around. And you're just gonna start pulling down and open it up. You're gonna open it up so you get to the point where this is the bottom of the pelvis. Uh, this is where your sirloin sits. So what we're gonna do is as soon as you get to the bottom of that, you're gonna take your knife, put it right under it, follow that bone out. Come back around on this side. Do the same thing. Now, this is the little bit of the trickier part is we'll continue this cut. If you're breaking down any ungulate or any, what's the word I'm looking for here? Basically any beef, pig, lamb, any of them, you're, you can see where the spine, space, the spine is straight and it starts to curve. Right at that curve, you're gonna cut in between that vertebra right there, which allows you to then just snap. And you cut your short line off. So, I'll go ahead and pause, slow that down. That's your short line. So you have your tenderloin and your strip. So this is gonna be boneless. I could have um, pulled the tenderloin off while it was hanging. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the table just because I wanted to be able to show you guys how to actually pull the whole short line off. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to the table, get a little more set up, and we'll see you in a second. All right, so back on the bench. We're gonna start with the flap and flank. This is that little chunk that we pulled off. We're just gonna to toss that right in the grind. So now that we have this opened up, you can see the couple different sections. There's your flank steak, there's your flat meat, here's your suet, and your kidney is in here in the suet. Customer does not want kidney or suet. So we're just going to go ahead and peel this right off. Trim off a little bit there so we're not wasting anything. All right. So next up with this, we're going to separate the flank from the flap. Again, if you look at it, you can see the separation in the membrane right here. So what we're going to do, come up here open it up and then we're just going to trim all the edges of this to make this pull easier so if you want to get real finicky with it you can go through <clears throat> and pull all of this up So, now that we have this all trimmed up, we can start pulling the membrane. There's a membrane on either side of this. One's a lot thinner. You can just pull it off like that. This side's a little bit thicker, has a little more fat and tendon to it. So, might take a little bit more. Once you get it about two thirds of the way down, take your knife, just use the tip of it, score it, and pull. That's clean. Trim this up a bit. Customer does not want this, so I am just trimming it up, trimming it up purely for your viewing pleasure. So, there's your flank steak. Use that for fajitas, toss it on the grill. It is delicious. This customer would like this hamburg. So there it goes. So, now we're working on flat meat. So once again, I'm gonna go through and just kind of trim up 
all the corners of this to make this pull easier. Because once again, there is a membrane on it that we are going to pull off. When you pull this one off, there is going to be a chunk, a flap that's going to come up with it. It is not connected to the rest of the flat meat. It's just an extra, extra belly muscle in there that we're going to pull right off. All right, so there, I'm just gonna trim that, trim that. Toss that right in the grind. So, now we'll trim this up even more. Take the rest of this fat off the top. So now that we got to this point, we're going to go ahead and pull this off of this membrane as well. Again, you can use your hands for this. There will be a couple of sections where you're just going to have to take the edge of your knife and kind of push it down and work with it. I am not in frame. Look at that. Big shock, everybody. All right. So there's your flat meat. I'm just going to go through the rest of this, trim up what's going in the grind. Leave a little bit of fat on that for a better grind. All right, so now we have the flat meat. If you've ever gone to a steak tip house and gotten marinated steak tips, 99% of the time, this is where it comes from. I have cut, I couldn't even put a number on how much flat meat I've cut. So we're just going to go through, pull this membrane off and denude everything. It's a fun word I don't know if I've used on here before. Just gonna open all this up. All right, so then I slice that in half, cut a little bit of an angle. Now you got some steak tips. Try not to slice myself on these knives that I put in the wrong spot. All right, so I'm going to change this glove. Doo, 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 doo. And we're also going to change up the camera angle a little bit because I feel like a little too far away and you're not in great frame. There, look at that. Now you guys can see. All right, so this customer is getting, on this side of the beef, they're getting boneless strips and fillets. So what I'm, I'm going to do, we'll flip this this way, and we're going to position the butt tender, which is this, up towards here, and just work our knife around the spine. And open all this up. So now that that's open, we're going to go down and just drag the knife over these feather bones that are here.
And we're going to try and obviously keep as much meat on the primal as we can and get as much as we can off the bone. All right, so there's your tender line. We'll trim that up in a second. So what I'm going to do is finish trimming this up a little bit. And I am going to cheat because I do have a bandsaw. I guess it's not really cheating because I have, do own a butcher shop. But if you were watching this for the first time, trying to figure out how to do a beef at home, what you can do is, obviously, again, you can just make your cut here, hit these feather bones along the side, um, and just get it all set. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to chine this. So I'm going to take it on the bandsaw, and you can see this little knuckle right here. I'm going to cut on the bandsaw at an angle and take this whole chunk of spine off, which will make it easier to take off these feather bones and the rest of the spine. So I'm going to run over there. I'm not even going to stop the camera. I'm just going to run over, do this real quick. We'll see you in a second. So now that we have that chine pulled out, this makes life much, much easier. Because now I can just go and pull out each one of these feather bones individually. If there's a little extra meat on there, you can go through, trim that off real quick. All right, so, and then what we have are these, the rest of the spine right here. And just take a knife, work behind all that. And just pull all those right off. So now all you're left with are these little chunks of bone right here. You're just going to take your knife and just scoop around them. So if you've ever bought a whole primal of a strip at a grocery store and you've always wondered what these little divots are, now you know. It's a little chunk of the bone that stays with it. So now we're just going to go through while we got it in hand, finish trimming this up. Take off this extra fat on the bottom. Square it up, take out the red that we want, toss that in the grind. We'll flip it over. As you can see, there is a bit of a tendon right here. So what I like to do, just take that corner, We'll take that off just like that. So this beef has decent fat content as is, so I'm not going to trim anything off of that. So now we're just going to square it up. As you can see, we're at a bit of an angle there just from where we separated the rib plate. So we're going to square that up, and we'll toss that in the tips. We'll do that in a second. This customer is getting inch and a half steaks. So we're just going to go through. Break all these steaks down. Now, the one thing you need to worry about on this side is this is actually a little bit of cartilage left over from the hip bone. So, 
before you toss that in the grind, you can just go ahead, take that off, toss it in the rendering, toss that in the grind. And what you're left with are some really nice strip steaks. So we will go ahead, toss that on there, leave that till the end. You don't need to see me trim steak tips. So now we got the money maker, what everyone's looking for. So when cleaning this tenderloin, you just kind of got to go through, start denuding it, take all the big chunks off. You're going to pop this chain off. You take your finger, run it right in there. Now, once you get to the top here, you kind of got to be a little careful. As you can see, that cut I just made basically separated this chunk of the chain. And we're just going to toss that in the grind. So now we're going to take off the rest of this fat that's around here and be very careful with it. Obviously, we don't want to trim too much of the red. But again, also, if this is just going to for you and your freezer, it just kind of depends on how much you enjoy fillets. Me, honestly, I'll usually end up turning, I'll cut fillet steaks, toss them in the freezer, and 90% of the time they turn into stir fry. Not a huge fillet guy. It just kind of is what it is. Um, Gonna pop all that stuff off the bottom. So now comes for the magic tricks. Just trimming that a little bit. So as you can see, there is a bunch of silver skin on the top of this, and we do not want that. So, what we're going to do, we're going to make an incision down here where it tapers off and just work the knife up. If you work the knife from the smaller end to the larger end, you'll get a nice smooth cut up. The meat will not get all torn up and gouged. It'll be nice and smooth. And to show you, I'll go ahead and cut this off. You see, when you start cutting the other way, it starts to tear up the meat and gouge it a little bit. So, now, I'm just gonna finish tearing out the rest of this silver skin. Now, when you trim this much, of the silver skin off, you do end up with slightly wonky uh, butt tender fillets. I think it's worth it. It's one of those situations, will it be a perfect restaurant quality um, fillet? No, but guess what? It's gonna be delicious and it won't be chewy. So we'll go ahead and pop that off. We'll toss that right in the tips. So they once again want these inch and a half. So we'll just start. Breaking these down. Toss that in. And now you're starting to get into what you would expect to find at like a steakhouse or something like that. Now, once we get down to the end here, as you can see, tapers off. This customer is looking for inch and a half steaks. They're obviously not going to get more than one inch and a half steak out of this. And instead of just taking the tail and tossing in the tips, what you can do is, if you're looking at it like this, coming from the top, you can cut down and go almost all the way through, flip it, and there you go. You got a nice, chunky filet. Yes, if you start playing with it, it will fall apart for sure. But in this scenario, what you're left with is just a really nice steak that'll eat well and not a very valuable chunk of meat that is going to end up in the full in uh, the tip pile. So 
The next video you're gonna see, like I said, I filmed it earlier, we're breaking the fourth wall and kind of how we're doing stuff. So, next time you see me, we'll be doing bone in, uh, bone in porterhouse T-bones. See you in a second. All right, so on this side, we're gonna be breaking this down into bone in um, porterhouse and T-bones. So on the last side, we broke down the flap and the flank um, and took it off the half. So I'm not gonna worry about going through all that with you. What I'm gonna do is just clean this up real quick and get it prepped for um, running on the bandsaw. So you do have this bone over here like we had on the last side. And we're just gonna go through, clean up all this cartilage. Now this animal did tender up quite a bit. Um, this, this was an intact bull that they had on a mountain. So, uh, and it was a bit of a run around <clears throat> to get him. He ended up breaking out of his pen and uh, we kind of had to walk him down a little bit. So he was a little tough going in the cooler, but I am pleasantly surprised how he uh, tendered up a little bit. I'm not too worried about cleaning up the butt part of the tenderloin yet because that's gonna get cut off and we're gonna clean that up on its own. And again, the more the more you do whole, the less you have to do uh, per stake, trim wise. Cut this big old chunk of tendon out. Beautiful. All right, so that's cleaned up the way I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I will switch camera angles and we will pop you over to the saw. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and break the fourth wall on this because it's early and yeah, no. So I'm actually filming this section before I actually film the beginning part of this video. And I forgot to turn the camera on while I was running the bandsaw. So here we are. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run the duster. You guys have seen me run a bandsaw a handful of times if you followed the channel for a while. Um, Again, it's just being careful and calculated risks. Obviously, my bandsaw is a little more red-necked than most. We don't have the guard on there, and it <laughs> turns on and off with a light switch. So it is what it is. If it works, use it. So I cut all these right around an inch um, in sections where there is a little bit of the spinal cord. You can go ahead and pop that out, but these stakes look fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for a little visual representation at the end. As you can see, with the trimming that I did before the cut on the bandsaw, um, I'm, I don't have to go through and trim all of these. If I wanted to, we could go through and if the customer wanted very lean cuts, you could go ahead and cut that tail off right there but it's not a huge deal. All right, those are all your porterhouses. These are your T-bones. As you can see, as I'm dusting these down, um, you can see that the size of the tenderloin is decreasing the further I go down on the um, on the cuts to where you will see in a second when we get to the last T-bone there will be almost no tenderloin on the actual stake itself. All right, so there's your porterhouse and there's your T-bone. 
So obviously you can see the porterhouse has way more filet. Um, this is the face cut after you cut the butt tender off. So that's right there. So there's your difference right there with the cuts. So we're gonna go ahead, toss these on the tray, and I'm gonna show you how I clean up the butt of this. Um, I always like to give myself, if it's one of those situations where I could maybe get another steak, I'll extend it further to have better tenderloin cuts coming off of it. I think it's just a better, better use of what you got. And clean that up a little bit more. Clean this up, toss in the trim. Same with this tail end. I'm actually gonna go ahead and toss this guy into tips. Because it is a decent enough little cut. It'll be tender enough, you can toss it in a pack of tips and it'll be very delicious and tender. So we're gonna go ahead and toss that there, toss that in the grind. All right, you got your butt end of the tenderloin. Go ahead, hone up a little bit. So what we're gonna do, I grab this section of fat right here, and that's where I start my trimming. And it's going to get that fat off. I'm not too worried about having too much fat in the grind because this is a fairly lean animal. It's got it's got decent fat on it. They uh, they grained it out pretty well. But uh, like I said, move it up and down that mountain, you're burning calories. I know I did chasing these goddamn things. All right, so as you can see, there is this flap that comes over the top of this. So what I'm gonna do is just use the corner of my knife, kind of open it up a little bit. Now, if you wanted to have perfectly uniform stakes, you could not worry about popping this membrane off. I would much rather have <clears throat> no membrane and have a little bit of a wonkier steak, because guess what? It's all gonna eat the same. So, now that you have this, I'll worry about the bottom side after. If you were to take your knife and go this way towards you with it, what it would do is it would pop up um, and not look as nice. So what you can do, start at the end here, and again, this is a reiteration of the whole tenderloin that I just showed you. And just move it forward. Pop that down. And again, as you can see, if I cut down that way, it gouges a little bit more. Um, not too bad, but... Take this out down here. Flip it over. We'll take the rest of that fat and just kind of make these a little more uniform. And from there, square that off. Customer wants these about an inch. Now, you have some nice filet mignons. So, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. 
Um, go ahead and adjust the camera. Hey, how's it going? So, um, from where I'm filming this, this is going to come out probably later this week because today is the 25th, so it'll come out later this week. Um, I will be putting out a deer processing video before this. We got a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, we will have two mil two. <laughs> Lord, give me strength. We're going to have Toolman Tim on, uh, meet the critters on Saturday. Um, we're going to talk about his time raising livestock and kind of livestock and preparedness and also why he kind of got out of it. I think that's super important to talk about when we talk about raising livestock is the off button for it. If it doesn't work, if it's not working, there is an exit strategy and the reasons why. Um, and then coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, and I completely forget the rest of their names. I will probably go ahead and put them right here on the side of the screen. Um, me, Blakesley Acres, and a handful of other YouTube, YouTube channels are kind of going to be going through our winter prep. All of the things that we're doing to get ready for winter. Um, again, most, almost all of these are New York-based, New England-based, where we have to deal with winter. I might be the most northern out of all of them. Um, but they're obviously dealing with lake effect out there. So it's all of the things we're doing to prep for winter, um, tips and tricks we figured out along the way that make life easier. So we're going to all be putting out a video on the same day, all tagging everybody's stuff in it. And then from there, we're going to be doing a couple podcasts, pulling everyone on the pot on meet the critters to one, just kind of re go over everything and introduce everyone to the community that we're trying to build here and hopefully open up their communities to us. So I hope everyone uh, is looking forward to that, and I really appreciate everyone watching. So we'll go ahead and see you next time.